doubt the name Black Sabbath is back on the horizon. Soon to go belting across the globe and across various stages. That's a track from their brand new album, which is called The Headless Cross. The two people behind this reincarnation of uh, Black Sabbath are the two people who are in front of me now in the, in the Friday Rock Show studio, Tony Iommi and Cozy Powell. Now, Cozy was with us just three weeks ago. We'll talk about that later, but welcome back. And Tony, welcome to you. Thank you. Great to meet you. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, powerful. It's back on course. Last time, it went wrong. Something went wrong the last time you were uh, up and flying. What happened? It certainly did. Um, which part? <laughs> Particularly, I mean, Hammersmith, I, I vividly remember. I, was, I thought, oh, great, I've got tickets and all, and nothing. Yeah, there was a lot of that period where I'm in so many hassles. I think, uh, I think that microphone's gone down. If you just want to jump over uh, to that one a little bit and share that one, do you mind? Sorry. Ah, I see. Uh, there's so many hassles uh, management-wise and, and whatnot. Uh, it just, just wasn't working. Um, so the band, we just had to come off and take time off to sort everything out. Mm. And Hammersmith one was uh, one that suffered badly from it. Because I, I was talking to people, like, you know, in the street, and they, they were let down. Because the, but then people don't know what goes on behind the scenes, which is why we're oh, talking tonight. It was, it was dreadful. I mean, we, we were waiting to play, but trucks wouldn't move. We, um, we were having problems with the PA company. It just, nothing happened how it should have been, so it was total chaos. Mm. So you reorganised the whole thing? Yep, the whole thing's just had to come off the road and sort out complete new management, um, and of course new record company and, and band. Mm. So um, now it's fine, everything's brilliant now. The album is well on course. How long did it take you to construct this album? I think overall it was about, what, five months overall. Mm. But um, recording-wise, probably about three months. About three months in the studio. Mm, yeah. Because I notice on the back of the album, it's you and Cozy who got the production credits. That's right. So is it fair to, fair to say now that Black Sabbath, the nucleus of Black Sabbath, is the two of you? That's correct, yeah. Okay, who else is in the band? There's uh, Tony Martin, uh, vocalist, uh, also on the album before, right. Eternal Idol. Um, Jeff Nichols was playing keyboards on the album. Um, bass players were, we're still pondering over that at the moment. Right. So that's a touchy question. <laughs> <laughs> so what, you, what you're, you're auditioning? Um, we've got some people in mind, but um, we can't sort of say yet because of contractual problems. Right. Contractual problems. I know. Lovely. Musical differences and contractual yeah, problems uh, are the two phrases. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that really yeah. is. Okay, live work. Um, yes, we're, we're, well, we're going to be on the road now for next year. Starting in America, five weeks. <clears throat> then I think we do Japan after that. Uh, and then come to England and Europe. Uh, for a, quite an extensive tour, really. Right. We will be playing England this time, believe me. Um... Which we want to concentrate on a lot of the, a lot of the towns in England, um, and then we'll be going back to America. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be, take a year in all to do. Right. So it's all it's all lying out there in front of you. It certainly is. We're just ready to go, and you know we're very sorry about what's happened in the past, and it really isn't the band's fault. That's all I can say. And you know he's probably heard it so many times before, but I mean we feel really bad about it, and believe me, we'll make it up this time. Okay. If you can swing that mic round, I'm right, sorry, the B BBC's running out of money. We can only afford one microphone at the moment. We will get the other one fixed in a second. Now, Cozy, you were in here, what, was it three weeks ago? Something like that, yes, it yeah. was, wasn't it? And then we were all talking about uh, the Irishman. Yes, Gritting My Teeth. Well, I was, I was set to do the tour with Gary. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, what people didn't know is that we'd had a bit of an altercation in the afternoon before we came on to do your show. Mm. And um, to, be, to be fair to both Gary and myself, uh, we'd started rehearsals in good faith, and um, unfortunately it started off pretty bad and got worse. I think uh, Gary was uh, wanting from me, me to play everything just exactly how the, the previous drummers had played, and the, the records, uh, he wanted everything exactly the same. And I didn't feel very comfortable doing necessarily some of the fills and all the rest of it. But whatever, we, we, we stuck, stuck it through, and um, it was unfortunate that it was a week before the actual first date that uh, it was decided that I maybe would be better to be re replaced. And so, uh, contrary to a lot of the reports, I didn't walk out, but I was replaced. And it's probably better for, for Gary and better for me, because it was enabled Gary to get on with a, a drummer that could do the whole of the European tour and the American tour. Yeah. Uh, because I was going to have to stop halfway through anyway to concentrate on uh, the Sabbath uh, material. Because obviously, having spent six months of last year working on this album, and it was just totally unfortunate that both came out at the same time. But of course, as usual, I got it in the neck from the press and just about everybody else for uh, supposedly walking out. But I, I but didn't. you didn't? I didn't walk out, no. I okay. don't walk out on anybody a week before a tour. That's unprofessional, and I'd like to think I am at least professional. So now it's Black Sabbath and Black Sabbath all the way. 
I've cancelled everything else to do with uh, the session work. I've, well, I've done a lot of session work in the last few years, and I've been very grateful for it. But I've always wanted to be part of a band, and uh, I don't join bands to leave them. I, I, do, I join bands because I want to stay with them. It just so happens that I don't put up with maybe the ego trips as, e as easy as some musicians will. I've been probably around a little bit too long for that. Mm. And the last band I really got involved with on a long-term level was Rainbow. Tony phoned me up last year and asked me to do the uh, get together with him and he's asked me several times before this time the time is right we sat down we t kept a very low profile worked on the album and we're really pleased with what we've done okay here's another track from it
final track of the brand new album, just out by Black Sabbath, Headless Cross. Tony Iommi and Cozy Powell are my guests here on the Friday Rock Show. The time now is 23 minutes after 10 o'clock. And we're just talking about what's, uh, what's in, in the future. But actually, I would just like to point back at the past. I don't want to dwell in the past. But every time I meet Ozzy Osbourne, and I, you always ask the same sort of questions, <laughs> rock and roll, right? <laughs> but the one thing that he, he always gives me the same answer about you, he says, oh, that guy, man that invented the riff. He's always in that, he said that to me in every interview I've ever done with him. Perhaps he's stuck. <laughs> 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 but he, he, he does, and I feel that there's, there's a lot of truth in, in that. I mean, you, 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 you're such a great riff merchant. What do you, I mean, let, uh, you explain what a riff is. Somebody might be going, riff? Hey, that's an arrow. <laughs> right? uh, the tune I come up with, I suppose. Um, it's, it's hard for me to sort of say anything about you know, a particular player as far as riff's concerned. Um, I, f I don't find any, any problem coming up with them. I've, I've got millions of them. Yeah, I have to jump in there because when we, uh, Tony and I got together initially, I, I got a few ideas sort of scratched together on one tape and I went up to Tony's house and he said, uh, oh, you want some riffs? And he, he went into the cupboard and pulled out four bags, uh, f you know, uh, the shopping bags full of cassettes <laughs> and there must have been uh, about 30 or 40 riffs on each cassette. So, I, 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 I mean, I reckon he should open the shop. <laughs> Riffs for sale, proprietor yeah. Tony Iommi. Because I'll tell you what, I, I've never heard... I mean, I've worked with a lot of great guitar players, but I've never, ever heard riffs like, like this man can come out with. And um, to play to them as well is just a joy for me. Yeah. And, and, and they're, they're straight ahead. They're very straight ahead riffs. Yeah, so we've no actually, actually, yeah. Just to fill everybody in, we've just been doing a, thing, a magazine interview, right? The lot right. of us. Right. Yeah. So we've been talking for an hour anyway. Yeah. Right? So I don't... Without, I mean, but our audience hasn't heard this. Uh, they, they're real straight-ahead riffs. You never deviate from doing something that's absolutely straight-ahead, Tony. Mm -hmm. um, it's just whatever comes at that time. Uh, it's, that's how I feel. I just write them as they come. And particularly now, I mean, with, with Cozy involved, I mean, he's, he's sort of made me more enthusiastic. I've come out with a lot more different ideas now because I'm bouncing off him. I mean, always before, I had to sort of write a lot of the stuff by myself and, and, and with Jeff, Jeff Nichols as well. But um, when Cozy and myself sat down... Uh, it's sort of the excitement and everything it enabled me to come out with a lot more variation in riffs, mm. um, which was, was great, you know, and they come out a lot quicker than they ever, they've ever done before. Have you ever had any training in music? Uh, I went to one lesson, it was disastrous, absolute rubbish. So I sort of gave up, you know, it's, um, I thought I'd got to learn myself. Mm. And uh, I started on accordion first, actually, as a matter of fact. On an accordion? On an accordion, yeah. I'm sorry about that. Um, but never ever reading music, I mean, I can't read, read music. Yeah. Because I, I like to have things come out as you feel them at the time, and I think to music it's a bit too static, mm -hmm. for me anyway. And yet you're a past master at, uh, at doing things. I mean, you've taught people who've, who've learnt music how to play. <laughs> That's the most, one of the most remarkable things about being, uh, being a musician, is you've got this, this incredible avenue of expression. Yeah, it is. It's, I, I love being a musician. I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Right. I, I love what I do. Um, I'm a guitar player and hopefully I'm trying to be a good one. <laughs> How many guitars have you got? Not so many now. I, I did have about 40 or 50 of them and I've sold a lot off because I felt sorry for the, the things just sitting there. It's good if a kid can have a guitar that he likes. To be, you know, if he, to one in the shop that he can buy one of my old guitars. So I did sell some off. Um, I've still got my old Faithfuls. I'll, I'll never let them go. And what are they? What, what type of guitars? I've got uh, some old Gibson... SGs. Um, the one I use mainly on stage is, uh, is by a chap in Birmingham who made it for me, JD. And uh, I've used that since virtually day one, really. Um, it's all my own designs on it, all my own pickups and 24 fret uh, neck. Uh, but no, no, as opposed to what? As opposed, as opposed to, to 21 or 22. Which enables you to get higher or lower? Yeah, in fact, it's funny enough, talking about that, I've just got a 29 fret today, which is uh, quite a new thing, you know, I haven't been about that long. Um, that enables you to get a higher get note. Higher notes as yeah. well, yeah, yeah. Whether I can play it or not is another thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll scratch around it somewhere. <laughs> yeah, around it somewhere. But um, yeah, it seems good. And uh, I mean, I, was, I, I keep wanting to talk to you about the drums. We did all this three weeks ago. <laughs> 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 He's got a different kit now, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any special sort of action on the guitar? Do you have a, a special width of the neck? I do, yes. Um, I have just a particular size neck that, I, that I, feels good to me. Uh, and a special gauge string that feels right for me. Okay, now what would that be? Strings. Yeah, for, for the benefit of people who are into... into or I use an ultra-light ultra gauge strings at the moment, which are Picato. Um, 
I find them, I've, all, I've used them for years and uh, many years ago I went to a company to, for them to make me like gauge strings and of course in them days they said it's impossible, it can't be done, it won't be harmonically right because it'll always go out of tune and stuff and I said look, it can be done because I've done it, I've, I've made a setup myself out of banjo strings and whatnot. And of course, then I've tried companies and they said, no, it can't be done. I said, it can be done. So eventually they come round to my way of thinking and made up a set. And of course, now everybody's got light gauge strings and 24 fret necks. And I was the first one to have a 24 fret guitar as well. And now you're doing what, 27? 29. 29. 29. <laughs> <laughs> Man never stops, progresses all the time. More music, devil and daughter.
from the album, which is called Headless Cross by Black Sabbath. The track was called Devil and Daughter. 27 minutes now before 11 o'clock. Our guests, live guests here on the Friday Rock Show are Tony Iommi and Cozy Powell. Now very, very much part of Black Sabbath. You're happy to be a member? You must be. Stupid question. Naive question. Of course no, you're happy. Really. I, I think uh, well, out of this one, he says. <laughs> it's not because, I mean, I, obviously I've, I've been associated with so many different records over the last few years. Basically, as a session man. And uh, I've, I've tried to sort of uh, get involved with the band for such a long time. And uh, this, this time I've actually had the chance to sit down from day one with the material and, and co-write with, with somebody else instead of just being brought in at the end to do the drum tracks. It's, it's, it's so frustrating for a drummer sometimes, particularly when it's, it's an old fart as, well, as I am to be going, <laughs> to actually... Uh, you don't get a chance sometimes to be able to express yourself when yeah. you're brought in at the end, but if you can start off the track and give the foundation what I think it needs and a lot of this music, then uh, it's, it's so much nicer. Then what you're saying is now that you really are a band member. Oh, very much as so, As opposed yeah. to a cosy pal drummer. I think it's important, again, that, that, that people realise that, I, I mean, I'm not trying to join bands to, to, to leave them straight away. I mean, I, it's, it's, it's so important to get involved in, in a project for me. I'd, I'd love to be part of a project and not necessarily just brought in at the end, uh, hired, go and off we go again sort right. of thing. Right. And uh, this has given me so much satisfaction to be part of a, a classic band like Sabbath. Not only can I uh, put my input into the new stuff, but I can cre recreate all the old numbers as well. And, I mean, I've said that before on other projects that I've done, but this is something that I've really been looking forward to doing for quite some time. Tony asked me to join the band about 12, 10 years, 10, 12 years ago. Really? Again, yeah. Three or four yeah. years before, uh, since then. We've been trying to do it for a long, long time. I think it was a time when uh, Ronnie and Vinnie went straight away. I got on the phone to Cozy. I was in, I was in Miami at the time. And uh, we tried to do it then. And then we tried again a bit later than that. I mean, yeah. we tried various, various times to do it. It's either not been the right time or I have been with other bands and, and, and I've tried to be professional. I mean, I can't win whatever I do. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully this time, I'm going to be there for a long time. You will. Let, let me ask you then your opinion of the, of, of the current climate of rock and roll. Why are you going to succeed where other bands might not? Um, we hope we succeed. We're, we're very determined. We're, we're out to, you know, we really want to do it. We, we love what we do and... Uh, We've been around a long time. I mean, what can you say? I mean, it's... I think it's a conviction, really. I mean, it, it's the sort of music that there is... There's no compromise with Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath is a, is a, a classic band, and, and, and it's one of the few bands in, Eng in England that's still going from, from the early era. And it's nice to be able to come back in. It's a, it's a challenge. A lot of people have written, written the band off, and there's a lot of been bad things been said about the band in the past. And the only way you can really come back and put all those things to, 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 to rest are to come back with a great album and, and to do it live on stage. And right. Now, live on stage, what's it going to be like? Awesome. Uh, it certainly <laughs> is. Well, I tell you what, in, just in rehearsals alone, I mean, it really sounds unbelievable. And I've heard, as you know, every lineup we've had. And this is by far the, the best lineup we've ever had. It really is powerful. What about visually, Tony? Uh, we're older. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that didn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it'll, it'll be mainly we want to put over, as opposed to using monsters and stuff in stage sets. We'll have a good stage set, a uh, good light show, but we won't go over the top. We want to put over the hard music and the power of the band as opposed to how good we look. Uh, that is the main important thing for us, is, is what we can do musically. Mm -hmm. Um, and everything else will just be around it, you know. We'll have, we'll have props, of course, but uh, it won't be to take away from the music what we're doing. OK, now I've got to put this to you because it's a question that people always ask me. Uh, how old am I? No, 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 no <laughs> not how old are you? <clears throat> oh, what was that film? Um, you know that film. Uh, I keep thinking Spitting Image and it wasn't Spitting Spinal Image. Spinal Tap, you're Spinal oh, Tap. They always you go, would, Spinal you? Tap. That's uh, all about Black Sabbath. Is it? Yes, it is, actually. A lot, a lot of... Big part, I mean, it's about a lot of groups, but a main part of it is about Black Sabbath. Um, the Stonehenge thing that they used in the Spinal Tap, we had, as a, you know, of course. Um, on the hours one went the other way. They made, we, we drew it on a piece of paper what we wanted as far as the Stonehenge set. And they made it, the company made it, bigger than the actual, the real Stonehenge. <laughs> so consequently, we couldn't fit it on the stage. Everything was too big. It was blown way out of proportion. Um... We took it to America, and we had to send it back. We couldn't, it wouldn't fit anywhere. <laughs> and you know what? We couldn't give it away. We tried to give it to America to, into the desert where the London Bridge went, and they, they wouldn't have it. <laughs> so, uh, yes, a lot of it is. Yeah. So when you, have you seen the film? You must have seen the movie. Yes, we've done some stuff uh, with Spinal Tap, actually, in America. We've done some front covers. And at the time, I hadn't seen the film. Yeah. So they're saying, you've got to do this front page with the Spinal Tap. And I was saying, who's Spinal Tap? I hadn't heard of them then. And then, of course... 
when, when we'd done it, and later on I'd, I'd seen the film, I'd seen what it was all about. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, though? I mean, did you I find it offended was, by it? Uh, no, I thought it was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. It was fantastic. rock music down to a team. I mean, it was this business got it down, got it down it. to a fine art. It was fantastic. I recommend anybody go and see that. I've fantastic. seen it about 50 <laughs> times. <laughs> oh, <right>. Because especially <laughs> when you're in the business, you can see all the parts that's funny, you know. Because it does, every part of that happens, and it's so genuine, it's so real. You can it? almost see, see, hear yourself saying it. Yeah, that's the right. All the old thing we've all done, going to walk on stage and you've gone the wrong entrance and you're still walking around the hall trying to find the stage <laughs> and to the curtain. I mean, we've all done it and it, it's, it really is funny. It's a great film. It's a very funny film. I hear there's going to be Spinal Tap 2 well, coming out here. I can't imagine how they'll top that one, but I'd like to see. <laughs> That's what they say. You're going to be doing... Actually, let's, just to recap, if people have just joined us, because our new time slot is such they might think we just got on the air. We've actually been on the air since 10 o'clock. The tour in the United Kingdom, Black Sabbath tour, are there any sort of set areas? I mean, you say toward the end of this year. Is that a fair assessment? It's, uh, what, around September, September I think, the, yes. The, the dates are going in September at the moment. We do America first, and then September, we come back to England, Europe and England. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty extensive, actually. It is, yeah. They're, they're talking about ten, a minimum of 10 to 12 dates in England. Right. And Scotland, Wales, and whatever. Mm -hmm. so, um, Are you going to play Ireland? I think so. I don't see any reason why not. We I mean, want to play everywhere we can. We really do I mean, want the to. The aim is to get out and play. We mm. have to get back the people. We have to get back to the grassroots level, so that people can come and see what it's all about. They've heard it all and they've read it all. Now they want we want them to to, to see it for, for them for real on stage. And I mean, there's no substitute for a live performance. Right. Especially in rock. That's right. There is no substitute there is no, for no. live performance. We were talking about that earlier on. It's, it's, you can see videos and you can see. You can see things different, uh, you can hear e even on CDs, but there's no con substitute for a live show. Never will be, I don't think, mm -hmm. and that's... Yeah. And, a, and a live rock audience as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, fantastic. But the atmosphere is always oh, uh, electrifying. Stunning. We've got a competition. We've got ten signed albums. The album is called Headless Cross, Black Sabbath's new album. There are ten signed copies of this album to be distributed to people who get a question right. The question has been set by Tony Iommi and Cozy Powell. So, gentlemen, deliver. How is he going to do it? Oh, thanks very much. Don't oh, no. pass the buck there, Will. <laughs> but there's been five singers in uh, Black Sabbath on record. Uh, we need you to name them. Okay. This is on record. On record, yeah. Right. Five singers with Black Sabbath on record. If you can name them, only one of the first ten people to get the answer right, you will get a signed copy of Headless Cross, which is the, I said, the latest album by Black Sabbath. Send your answers on a postcard, back of an envelope, whatever you care to utilise, but get them to us as quick as you can. Send them to Headless Cross. Friday Rock Show, BBC Radio 1, London, W1A4WW, okay? The address is Headless Cross, BBC Radio 1, London, W1A4WW. I look forward to seeing you on the stage. I get the feeling that you look forward to getting on the stage. <laughs> we can't wait. I mean, it's, it's, we're so excited about the new lineup and the, the whole the old setup of it with new management, new record company. We're, we're ready to kill. Because there is, without a doubt, room in the arena for straight-ahead classic rock bands. Definitely. You are definitely, I mean, that's, that's what you're aiming for, that's what you're Well, we've got to prove it now, so we intend to. Yep. It's as simple as that. Okay. And both of you guys are going to be at the Hippodrome, London's Hippodrome. They have a rock night every Wednesday night. Both of these gentlemen are going to be down at the London Hippodrome on Wednesday the 26th of April, right? That's right. That's right. Signing albums, rocking about, and yeah. having the odd So turn up of... and uh, give us an idea of what yeah. numbers you want us to hear us play, because we'd yeah, like to get a bit thing. of feedback from that. That is another thing we want to get from, from the fans, that what they want to hear on stage, you know, so... From the old material. We've got a six hour show well, at the moment. Anything, we've got to trim it down a bit. Numbers. And <laughs> we're playing for them and we're playing, for, I mean, we'll play all night for ourselves. So if we could get that, that'd be great because to build a show up. Yeah, because you, yeah, you have, I mean, there's so much Black there's Sabbath so much, material. Yeah. Right? So much, we've gone forever and a day. Okay, let me just uh, repeat that information. The London Hippodrome, their rock night on a Wednesday night, Wednesday 26th of April. Tony Iommi and Cozy Powell are going to be there. And of course, so is Tony Wilson, myself, and everybody else who likes rock and roll. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Tommy. Go for it. Heavily.
By the time they get to London and the United Kingdom next September to go on the stages, they're going to be absolutely incredible. Because the one thing you know with that lineup, the new lineup of Black Sabbath, every member of that band, excluding the bass player, player because you don't know who the bass, bass player is going to be yet, is so schooled in the art of putting rock across live, they just don't put a foot wrong, which gives them the latitude to just put a foot right a little bit extra, just a little step forward, better than anybody else. I really think they're going to be monstrously successful in this reincarnation of Black Sabbath. Many thanks to Tony Iommi and Cozy Powell for coming into our studios and having a chat. And I don't know, I was a bit sort of selfish, a selfish thought. I'm looking forward so much, I want to be in the front row, to watching Tony Iommi play, let alone listening, just watching the way he actually moves his fingers on that guitar. Such a brilliant guitarist, that guy. And I'm not saying that because he's here, because he's gone there. But uh, it's just astonishing. Cozy's one of the most powerful drummers in the world. And that vocalist has got a voice that soars. I'm so looking forward. I could sit here and play the whole blooming album all night long. But we've only got a couple of hours, and we've eaten up 50 minutes already, so I'd better play you some other stuff. But first, as they say, a station check. This is Radio 1 FM. My name is Tommy Vance. This is the Friday Rock Show, and it's 10 to 11. The Survivor album has just been released in this country. We've been playing it on and off for about three or four months um, because I had an import copy of it out of the States. Check out this track. It's good. It really is excellent.